Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. You are in for a treat today. We have our lovely broker, Joyce Powell, giving us a very knowledgeable insight into NJMLS. She's going to show you how to navigate throughout the dashboard, how to create listings, talk about office exclusives, a lot of really important stuff that you guys should know. So, Joyce, take it away. All right. So, I don't know that we want, if you want, we can go through how to create a listing. I don't know if that's what you want. I wanted to get, we can cover some of that. I wanted to get a little more in depth with it. I know that a lot of you have, we're having trouble with inventory. Obviously, there's no inventory anywhere. And one of the things that you can do to if you're looking for something specific for your client is when you come into the New Jersey MLS, go into the toolkit, go down to forms and docs and general information. And there you're gonna see this link for office exclusives. A lot of the offices are putting their listings there. And there's, again, as always, there's two types of office exclusives. You have the ones on the top that are not, these offices are not cooperating. Now you can try, you can call them, but nine times out of 10, they're gonna say, no, we're not cooperating. They've got the paperwork, it's filed with the MLS. And um, these properties cannot, when you have an office exclusive that you're not cooperating, cannot advertise. You cannot have a sign in, on the lawn. You cannot do any Facebook marketing for that listing because if you do, you are a, going against our the uh, National Association of Realtors Clear Cooperation Rule. The other section down here, and they run it, they keep it by month and they keep adding as the days go on. So these are the dates that these listings were put in. These are office exclusives that the office will cooperate. They're not, they won't be found, you won't find them on the regular MLS count search. But again, if you're looking in any of these towns and you, you don't find anything for your buyer there, the other option is to come into the office exclusive and check the will cooperate page and see if there might be, oh, you know, there was nothing for my buyer at Lyndhurst, but Keller Williams Prosperity's got one in uh, Lyndhurst for 550. It's a uh, residential three, two means three bedrooms, two baths. Let me give them a call because it's under the will cooperate. And you can call, they have the listing agent's name there and you can call the office and set up an appointment. So I would check this when you run, uh, when you've exhausted the MLS that's regularly listed, I would make a habit as the market and the inventory continue to be low to check the office exclusives on a daily or weekly basis if you've got a buyer that's looking for something specific. So that's where office exclusives are. The other thing that uh, a number of agents have asked me about is uh, I want to do a mailing. I want to know I I'm doing a, uh, a CMA in a specific town, and I want to know what the stats are to include. I want to, you when you do your market analysis and you're competing with a number of agents, you want to show and walk into that seller and prove to that seller that you're the town expert on that. And one of the ways to do that is to come to the statistical page and the MLS provides quarterly town stats. And if you click on that, you're going to see current residential. Um, this is all. So this is going to be single, single family, two family or condo co-op townhouse. You also can go to the specific, if it's a single family. And if you click on that, you're gonna view the report. And it's going to tell you in the towns, first quarter, it's gonna to combine the solds, 
uh, first quarter 23 over first quarter 22 over first quarter 21. The average selling price median, the percentage, and then there should be, uh, I don't think this one has days on market, but it gives you some numbers here. You can tell them if you scroll down. Uh, okay. In, in, in Ordell, in the first quarter of 23, 12 properties were sold, as opposed to 14 last year and 26 in, in 2021. So this is directly responsible to the fact that there's no inventory. That's why the solds are down. So, and this goes for Bergen, uh, they have it for Passaic, and they have it for Essex County. So all of this data is there at your at your fingertips. And then so that's all the quarterly ones. If you went over here, you could get a days on market for a specific town. If you want, um, and then you've got your market share student to show. So you've got all of these different a comparative report data. You just manipulate it the way you want to. Say you wanted to look at um, at market share. You get it from um, from the company market share. You should all be able to do this, and you could go as of uh, the time frame you want a uh, year to date, uh, residential, county two. Let's just do Rutherford and see what it says. And you want uh, the number, you want list side. And see if I can move this up because you want both. You want listing, uh, listing and sell side. And then you execute the report. Oh, I didn't tell it sold. So this compares the offices, and it'll it'll show you. And you know, sometimes yeah, we may be second, but um, you know, you've got your days on market. And maybe you want to include residential to family. You might want to do um, a price range of homes. You can fix this and play with this to however you want the stats to look at. You want you uh, that stays on market. Uh, so you want the company. Do this, and we got residential. County two, and then you could do county three hundred, which is is lower down here, and we need sold. Time frame year to date. You could go year over year. There's all sorts of different reports that you can get in here. You can run your stats, and of course, oh, how did I get County Burlington? I think book three instead of two. Oh, well, that would help. <laughs> like Burlington. Because I'm looking at it all from an angle. So this is going to tell you how many were fixed, how many were arms. Uh, this is county local three. The average days on market. So there's all different sorts of reports that you can get from the MLS. And I would use them. I would play around with them. Find which one works for you. You can do the, and then you can use those stats, not only on a presentation. You could create a Facebook ad. If you don't have a listing to advertise, you could create uh, the statistics, and if you need help, come on in, we'll do it together. And you could do a Facebook ad. 
link it then as we've done in other training classes you link it with command it's a it's not a lot of money to run an ad for a week in a specific town you want to know what your home sold for and then you have the the link for them to to register so if you don't have listings you could do a market stack type of advertising by using the data in, in the new jersey mls to create something to pick up CMAs, to pick up buyers, to pick up, to start that conversation with a potential seller. Any questions on where to find the stats? We're good. All right, let's talk about some of these words. When you're putting a listing in and you're writing comments. When you send the listings in to me and I sign off on them, I don't always see your comments. But I get a report as soon as you make that listing live. And I always check on the MLS. I look at the report and I see how the sheet actually looks in the New Jersey MLS. And there's sometimes that I've had to send emails out. Master bedroom. Allowable to say in a listing or not allowable? Anybody in chat answering? Okay. Yes. Is it allowable or not allowable? Matt? Yes. Al yes, we can see the master bedroom allowed. Master bedroom is no longer allowable. It's one of those, it's primary bedroom. Oh, okay. Okay. Master bedroom is, and, and I, we all do it. We've, we've grown, well, grown up. As long as I've been in the business, the main bedroom that's got the bath was the master suite. Can't say that anymore. Mother, daughter. Yay or nay? It's nay. You cannot say mother, daughter. Extended family are the words to use. We're in a politically correct society and why can't you have a, a mother son living area? So no longer can you say so when you've got that split level or you've got that bi-level listing that's got the summer kitchen and the and the bedroom on the, the main level and the full bath, you can't say perfect for mother-daughter. No, extended family. Can you say walking distance to shopping? No. You can't say walking distance because you're discriminating against somebody that can't walk. Close to, close to shopping, close to parks, close to schools, close to houses, houses of worship. You can't say churches, houses of worship. So you can't say walking. Can you say elderly? Elderly is another one. You would be surprised at the words that you can no longer use. Can't say bachelor pad. You can't say executive suite. Executive is another one of those words that you can't use anymore. Obviously, in-law. Like mother-in-law, in-law suite. No, you got to stick with extended family. You can't say mixed communities. You can say adult community, but you can't say mixed 
communities. Obviously, you can't do anything that references ethnicity, um, singling out anything of that kind. Um, you can't say mature couple preferred on a rental listing, and we've all seen that. Uh, you know, you've got the landlord that's got the one bedroom that says, I don't want any children. And back in the day, you used to get a listing that said mature couple preferred. Can't do that. You cannot, um, but all of these words, while they, they're what realtors that have been in the profession a lot of years have come to know and they fall off our lips because we've been writing dialogue and we've been writing descriptions forever. But these are the words now that we can no longer say that, um, that are good. So I've got these, I'm gonna put them in the, the drive on my, my broker uh, FAQs so that they're there. But the biggest ones that, and some of these are, are nitpicky, but the biggest ones that I've seen from our listings now are mother, daughter, um, that's a big one, and obviously master suite. We've got to get out of calling it a master suite. It's primary. Any questions on that? My people that are that are on the on Zoom. Let's look. How about the master bathroom? No, primary bathroom, main bathroom. We can't say the word master, and I'll explain why. It has to do with the South and slavery. That's why they've gotten rid of the term master. Because they make these rules to encompass the entire United States and that's why the word master is no longer okay. Uh, is when we looking to NJMLS, we see the master, you know, the bathroom, bathroom, bedroom uh when there is anything starting to any due date for the well we're trying to clean it up and like i said old habits die hard uh you know i i've been i've been writing comments and listings since 1998 so for me it's 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 i have to keep reminding myself that you can't say those words anymore because we have evolved and there have been all sorts of different acts and um, fair housing and that have come into play that now make these words no more. Okay. Is we can find it uh, for the NJMLS any site we can find it all of the words? I have the words. I'm going to put them. I'm going to put a link on my um I don't know if I can get them into this broker minute, but they will be on a link on my on my email on the uh, the the park views uh, frequently asked questions. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Any other questions from chat, Lynn? Okay. Another thing that we have seen is that, and again, this is because there's no inventory and the offices and the agents want to take the, um, the office exclusives. When you take an office exclusive, you file all that paperwork, it has to be sent into the MLS. That's when they will post it on the report where we were before on the office exclusives. If after a time, your seller decides that they want to now have the listing go live. You have two options. The first one is to take a change of status form that is signed by the seller and there and you and the broker and there's a box in there that says publish office exclusive. When that happens, if you took that listing 
on April 1st and it went in as an office exclusive on April 1st. And now it's April 15th and the seller says, all right, I'm done two weeks office exclusive. I just put it on the MLS. I got, we got to get going on this. And you publish the office exclusive. It will go in with days on market of 15. And I know that the agents want to keep their days on market low because that's one of your tools in your tool bag when you go on a listing appointment. So what do you do? We have to have a conditional withdrawal form signed by the seller and the agent and me withdrawing the office exclusive conditionally. And then you would do a new set of pay of listing documents to go as a regular MLS listing. What we can't have and what some agents have done in the past is they've got the office exclusive here, not cooperating. And now seller says, all right, just get it on. We're ready to go, whatever. You can't leave this one here because the seller signed paperwork that said that they are aware that by not publishing it in the MLS and not cooperating with other offices, they will diminish their visibility, for lack of a better word. And they directed you as the agent not to publish their listing in the MLS. That's over here. Now they want it in the MLS. So they're signing listing paperwork that's authorizing you and me as the broker to put it in the MLS and expose it to everybody. So you've got two documents signed by the seller in direct opposite of each other. We can't do that. We can't have two listings running at the same time in the MLS. I'm not saying you can't take office exclusives. You can. But it, at whatever given point the seller said, I want in the MLS, it's time. You withdraw conditionally the office exclusive, whether it was not cooperating or will cooperate, you withdraw it. And then you do a new listing in the MLS. By doing it that way, the listing that goes in the MLS is fresh at day zero. And it will appear to everybody that it's a new listing. Because not, not every agent checks office exclusives. So they're not gonna know. And there's no address. They're only gonna be able to match it up by the town, the agent and the price. One question, sorry. As we saw before, what is the difference between not cooperating and will cooperate? Because if they don't cooperate, not cooperating mm -hmm. means the only office that can sell that listing is Keller Williams Parkview. Okay. Only Keller Williams Parkview. No, no. What would be the benefit of doing that? If you ask me personally, it, it, personally, I've always felt office exclusives violate your code of ethics, right? Because your duty to your seller is to get them the highest possible price in the shortest amount of time and not cooperating you're not exposing them. What is the advantage? You see it at times of the market that we're in now where there is no inventory. Agents are taking office exclusives, doing an open house and having 30 or 40 people at the open house. And some listings are going 40, 60, 80, 100,000 over asking. So in that instance, the advantage is the agent gets to have both ends of the transaction. 
but by not cooperating, sometimes you have a sick or, and I'm not supposed to say the word, elderly seller, that having so many people coming through the house is going to be more traumatic for them and upsetting to them. They've been in that home 50 years and they're, they're not emotionally ready to let go of the home. And they're not emotionally ready to have an onslaught of agents and buyers every five minutes coming through their house. So that would be the other reason to keep it as an office exclusive. In that regard, cooperate. But again, you don't get enough eyes on the office exclusive unless you've trained yourself to look at it on a daily basis or every two days and see what's come on the market as far as an office exclusive. But at the end, your fiduciary responsibilities get the best price for your seller. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions about cooperate and don't cooperate? We're all good. Can you just show me again how to get to false office exclusives? Okay, sure. So you would come to toolkit. You're going to come down to forms, documents, and general information. When you get to forms, documents, and general information, there's other store, there, there's, there's all sorts of data that you can get here, but this is where you want to go, office exclusives. And they keep them. Here's the instructions. If you're going to get an office exclusive of how to register it with the MLS, but then you would go to April. Come on. And then you'll see that, you know, Terry O'Connor, a not cooperating rental for $5,000 in Garfield. Okay. So no cooperation? Is only for our office. For example, I saw. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so here, Keller Williams. So, you have to come up. And uh, part of you. So, I can work only with this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Joe's got an, a not cooperating office exclusive. It's for our office. So, yeah, you know. could contact Joe if you have somebody in Ramsey for $500,000. Only Joe. No. Other, uh, These other offices are not going to cooperate yeah. with you. So it's only for us. It's, it's part view, and, part and, view. Yeah. And then over here, though, they will cooperate. So if you had somebody in Saddle River, Lyndhurst, West Milford, Baldwick, Livingston, Old Japan, these offices, you won't find a listing in the MLS but they are cooperating. And the only way to see anything regarding the house is to reach out to the agent. What you could do, right. You would, you could, um, you know, you could Google. They're not, yeah, you're going to have to get the address. So you, all you've got is the town, the price and the information. So you would have, if it's something that your buyer is in over here, you're going to have to contact uh, rematch Saddle River and yes, and Paul Collin, and he asked him about his two million three hundred thousand dollar uh colonial in Old Japan. So, uh, like we're behind it, so. okay, cool. yeah. If it, but again, when you have, for example, let's uh, where, where else have we got a local? <laughs> All right, Maywood's got a, and Sheldon will cooperate, but let's let's just look for giggles. And and I did this the other day. Um, I looked. I live in Hasbro Heights, and now there's six properties for sale. Two of them are under contract. I've never seen inventory like that in Hasbro Kites. 
So this is why, and I've never seen prices like this either, but that's, let's look for Maywood because Sheldon's got that office exclusive in Maywood. There's only four properties for sale in Maywood. And two of them are under contract. So this is why, and he's got a $500,000 listing and there's one for 460 and one for 500. And then Sheldon's got the office exclusive. So this is what's breeding office exclusives right now. You're saying the, the agent's trying to do both the, yeah. both ways. Yeah, they're, they're... What means FB, the second? Full bath. Okay. Full bath, half bath. Okay. Three yeah. bedrooms, so they're there. And this is the this is on East Fairmont, and that, ju that just went in today. Mo Sanker's got a new listing in um, in Oradell. He had uh, buyers that are under contract on a property in Hasbro Kites. And it's with um, KW City, Rob Prisette's office in Hasbro Kites. So most buyers now have to be immediate sellers. And there is, I'll show you Oradell right now, where he's going. And he's got delayed showings until Sunday's open house. And, and that's the other thing. If you take a listing, you automatically get up to three days for the showings to start. But if you put in a, a listing on a Monday and you're not gonna show it until Sunday at the open house, you have to complete the delayed showings form when you do the listing paperwork because it's more than three days. So here's here's most competition. He's got um, this is his listing for five oh nine. There's one house on the same block, three bedroom, one bath for three forty. That's an attorney review. Most houses at 509. And the next one is 995. How busy do you think he's going to be on Sunday? Wow. Yeah. So he he it went in the computer on Tuesday. Um, but his uh his delayed showings are until um, which is why it still has a zero, because it can't be shown. That one in the computer on Tuesday, it can't be shown until Sunday. How does it work for an open house for an office, office exclusive though? If they're not cooperating. You, you, can't, they do open house. you can't do an open house okay. on an office so exclusive. Like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna think. No, okay. you can't do an open house because now you are in violation of career cooperation. Yeah. You can do no advertising, no nothing. Okay. When you see no cooperation. Mm -hmm. When you don't cooperate. When you do cooperate, you can have the sign, you can do a Facebook ad, you can do an open house, you can do all of that. But you can't when you're not cooperating because now you're in violation. Any other questions, chat land? Is there anything anybody wants to see or doesn't know where to find on the MLS? Up here is where you can do your CMA reports. How do you do your CMAs? So I usually do the CMA like uh, by if you scroll down, you don't, you don't do full report, if you scroll down uh, to your right, let's say when it's full report, yeah. So, and I look for the CMA section, uh, which is to be up. Let me see that. 
Well, that's a cloud CMA. So I do the CMA report, but one time I tried to do the cloud CMA, but it didn't work. I couldn't do it. All right. So you, you come in here, you can do a CMA with property search, you can do a CMA with street search, you can do a CMA if you do the MLS, or you can come over here and you can do the cloud CMA. And that will then, it will take you to another place and you'll do your market analysis from in there. And Mary goes to Remind to do a CMA because mm -hmm. Mary, when you do your CMAs, are you doing them in New Jersey MLS? Are you doing them in one of the other uh, MLSs? Remind, yeah, because Remind is also in Garden State and it's also in um, in Central Jersey. But you can do, so you can do the CMA through the cloud CMA here. You also can go through your NAR and do it through the RPR, which is another, is another place to do a CMA through RPR. And you can also kind of do a little funky one in, in Realist. If you come into the Realist dashboard and then you could search, you could get property details and you can get comparables. You can get the neighbors, the neighborhood profile if you're doing it on an active listing or if you're searching by something else. So you can go through Realist as well to do your, um, to do your CMI. Most people wanna know what the neighbor's house sold for. And they wanna know how many days on the market. And did it go up? Did it go, was it over asking? Did it go with asking? How far over asking did I get it? The one thing you need to be mindful of is there are some sellers that say, well, if uh, I'm gonna list my house for 60,000 more than, the, than the, it's really worth because it's gonna go over asking. The reason that they're generating offers of 40, 60, 80 over asking price Number one, because there's no inventory, but because you get, you've given them an accurate market value of it. But there's going to be the sellers that are going to say, well, I want you to list it for a hundred more than it's worth. And that's when you have to pull out all of your tricks, show them days on market, show them where the difference between listing it at the right price and getting an over asking offer and it was on the market three days or listing it 150 over what it's valued at and then letting it sit there and taking price reductions. Do you all have the Carnegie? Oh, I'm going to get a here. Yeah. Do you all have the Carnegie Title app on your phone? You need to investigate that. And we actually I can, have. I can help with that. And we have an expert. <laughs> Why don't you introduce Thank yourself you. so that our agents know you when they see you around here? Yes, I'll be starting to make. Calls now. I actually just got my license this morning. So uh, I'm Ryan. Uh, I'm the new Carnegie Title sales rep. So I'll be taking over the Rutherford office for Johnson. We're still going to work together. Um, but I'm taking over. So that Carnegie Title app, if anyone does have questions on it, be more than happy to walk you through it, show you how to download it. Um, it's a really useful tool. It really gives you a lot of information for both buyers and for sellers. And the Carnegie Title app, the that also enables them to put in multiple offers, correct? Correct. So when you get, like I used a spreadsheet when I, would, when I was doing listing and I was a listing agent, I would use a spreadsheet for my sellers and put everybody in there and what the, what the offer was, 
how much was the down payment, what type of mortgage it was, any contingencies waived, how many days till closing. And I would do it on a spreadsheet. The Carnegie app allows you to do that and provide that to your sellers so that they can look at everything on one sheet and know what's going on with the offers. It generates a report that you can either print out and keep yourself or send it you know, right to your customer. And you, you can, for, for branding purposes, you can put your all your information, the color wings, logo. It's fully customizable for that. It just makes it like an official report for them to see, or if you want to just keep it for yourself, you can do that. They also have um, social media frames that you can put around a picture. If you've got a new listing, they have social media frames. They have. Oh, it's called, it's called Palm Agent One, is the actual name. Um, it just looks like it's like it looks like two houses. The logo is white with a blue stripe on the bottom. That's like one. Thank you. And then you'll go in and you just create you just create an account. And then if you want for the rep, you could select me because I'll be handling the other office. Looks like you have it. So again, when you're talking about I've got no listings, and how how can I you know surface for buyers? If you look at their infographics and they update them monthly, so you can use all of these infographics that are here as far as offer price and payment or down payment and, and mortgage. There's a ton of information that you can use that you can create a Facebook ad with that and generate buyers that way. So there's all sorts of information. Uh, they've got a graph rent versus rent versus owning. And think about that. You've got, we just saw somebody had an office exclusive for a $5,000 a month rental. So let's do the quick math. First month's rent, fee to the office, that's 10,000. A month and a half security, that's $7,500. So in order for that person to move into that $5,000 rental, you're looking at $17,500 just to move in. That's where that rent versus buy graph comes in. That's where sitting down with Mike Santana and Heidi from Mortgage and letting them have that consultation with these people to see what, you're gonna take $17,500 just to move into this apartment. What could you buy? What would they qualify to buy? So as the rents keep going up, that's when that rent versus buy graphic is important. And you could use that as a Facebook ad. That might generate a buy. You might pick up a buyer that's currently renting. So I encourage you to look, ask Brian, look at all the graphics that are available here, and we'll help you get some ads done if you want that. And uh, again, you've got this stuff for your sellers. On the bottom of it, it says buyer, it says seller. I've got Justin's picture on here because that's when it was. And there's calculators. You know, there, there's a monthly affordability, rent versus buy. There's all the calculators are right here for you. It's a great, great tool to use. And you've got the expert here to help you with it. Our mortgage people are here all the time to have that consultation with your buyers so that you can help them find the right thing. And I know we deviated off the MLS, but that was because we had other questions and I tend to travel. <laughs> I, I tend to travel down the road that's taken. So, and I don't even now know why I went that way. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so rent versus buy is, is big. And, you know, especially you pick up a new client, a new, uh, that's looking for an apartment and more does a lot of work with a lot of, uh, a lot of tenants, but when they start looking at these numbers, 
it doesn't hurt to have the consultation with them to see if buying is in their future with with what they have to put down on on apartments as the rents keep going up so don't um always think about that when you're when you're doing that any other mls questions And you know, you're New Jersey. Oh, I know we were in the CMA. That's why we were, that's how I got off to the, to the Carnegie title lab. Um, you've got your open house. You've got your, your reports. We covered reports. We covered listings. You can, this helps you. You can create a listing. And I know Janine has done it. And I'm just going to, with you, I'm just going to uh, remind you about it. You have two options. You can start your opportunity in command and bring in the blank listing paperwork. You can also up start your listing in the New Jersey MLS and then bring those PDFs in so it's already typed. That's the time saver with it. Because when you create the listing in the New Jersey MLS, you're putting in all the data for, for the listing. And then once it's all signed, all you have to do is launch it from the MLS. Whereas if you pull in all the paperwork into command for the listing paperwork and you type the listing in command, then you have to retype it again when you go to upload it into the MLS. So that's just uh, Janine's time saving. Uh, hack as far as only typing your your MLS input once. I need to sign your listing paperwork before it's active in the MLS. And I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, there are times when I find out there's a listing from an agent when I get the MLS email saying, congratulations, John Smith just listed a property in XYZ town, and I didn't sign the paperwork. I have to sign it. I have to sign everything. If you're putting something in Hudson MLS, I need to review it. I know the broker doesn't need to sign the Hudson MLS forms, but I need to see it. I need to check it, especially with compliance issues now and the MLS looking at it. When you have a rental in the Hudson MLS, you need to have, and it's a second floor. I know there's no front to a second floor apartment. You still have to have a picture of the front of that two family house in the Hudson MLS. If you don't, it's a $10 fine. I know it's not a lot, but it's a $10 fine. You don't wanna give the Hudson MLS $10. Take the picture of the front of the of the apartment. That's because so, so it, you know, a tenant knows that it's a tenant. Right. Mm -hmm. And to identify what it is. You have 24 hours to report a listing A ripped, otherwise, you get fined. You have 24 hours to report a listing under contract, or you'll get fined. You have seven days to report a listing sold, or you will get fined. And they have people there. If you put it in the Garden State MLS on Monday, and you don't put it in the New Jersey MLS until Wednesday, you will get fined. They have to go in on the same day. There are literally people in the MLS scanning and looking for the infractions. Lead paint form needs to be uploaded. You have to show compensation. The compensation has to be identified in the Hudson MLS. Usually they'll put the brakes on and not let you go any further. But you have to have these forms uploaded or They'll, they'll nail you for it. So anything else? We're good. Any questions?
I'm only a phone call or email away. My, 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 my sole goal in life is to get a bill from an MLS. And the only thing that's on that bill are the charges from the MLS for our new listings. That's the goal. We're getting better, but we still have one or two each month. So the goal is to only pay for new listings each month to New Jersey, Hudson, Garden State, Monmouth, Central Jersey, and all of them. Every month. Oh. Yeah, we get a bill every month. And they'll bill us for every new listing that we get. And then on the bottom of the bill are the fines for a late ARP and this, that, and the other thing. The goal is not only to be charged for new listings. With that, I thank you all for coming next week as our team rallies on Thursday at 12 o'clock. Look for Amanda's emails and she'll, uh, for what's coming up. But next, next Thursday at noon is our team rally. Okay. So there's a new class one morning, eight thirty, with Kevin and someone. Wealth building. Mm-hmm. Look at that guy. Michael King. Yeah, it, it's talking about building your sustainable wealth to, uh, you know, so you can retire. It's wealth building. I have a question. Kevin class is the eight or the too early? His class is too early at 8.30? Yes. Well, I'll tell Amanda. I don't think we can change, but we'll tell Amanda. Thank you. The uh, the wealth building is in coordination um, with, I believe, is. something that Mark King is presenting. So that's why the time is at 8.30. The goal uh, that Kevin wants to achieve is, is getting everyone up and and getting that motivation and, um, you know, getting ready to tackle the day. So that's why we're doing that first thing in the morning. But if you'd like to speak with him about everything that he has to offer, please feel free. I think Thank you guys amazing. so much for attending Joyce's class. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you, Joyce. Bye.